emotional intelligence in social interactions. Let me begin the story. Story of um, King Ambarisha. King Ambarisha. King Ambarisha, you know, is a great king. King Ambarisha was a great king. He was ruling the whole, whole, uh, whole India, whole Bharat, whole Bharat, Mahakand. You know, he was the king. He was the king. And a very pious king. And a very great king. And very much God loving, God fearing, very pious, dharmic king. He was a Vishnu Bhakti. He was a Vishnu Bhakta. And his wife was also a great devotee of uh, Lord Vishnu. Lord Vishnu. Okay. So what happened? What happened? You know, they were they, they go through a lot of vratas, a lot of fasting, vrata, you know, year round vrata. Every ekadashi, ekadashi, they used to have the vrata. So it's a year long vrata, and finally that special ekadashi has come, which is the big thing. Big thing that day you have to go completely on fasting, and at the at the uh, uh, break at the break of ekadashi to dwadashi, you have to break your fast. And you have to eat something. Okay. So this is he was going through the Vrata. So at that time, on that day, what happens? What happens? The sage Durvasa comes to the court of King Ambarisha along with his followers, along with his Shishagana. Shishagana, they all come there to the king. Ambarisha receives them with all the dignity, all the honor, because Durvasa was a great. Sage Maharishi Maharishi. So he invites them, receives them, and requests him to have his food there. To have his food. The King Dirwasa says, Let me, let me go to the river, have my bath and other uh, things, and come back and have the food. So the king goes to the nearby river for having his bath, and he has to come back. And he was not coming back. And that moment, that moment where the vrata, the fasting has to be broken by eating something, the moment is fast arriving. And the Rwasa was not coming back. And the king was thinking, without, without serving the food for the great sage, my guest, Atiti Deva Bhava, to the Maha Sage, Durvasa, is there. Without giving food to the Durvasa, he could not eat. It is not proper manners. It is not proper for the king to, you know, that means disrespect in the uh, sage. So he was waiting and waiting and waiting and Durvasa was not returning. And if he would not break the fast at that time, the entire, the entire all the breath and all the effort that he had put in the year long would go waste. So he was worried what to do. Then Vasista was also there in the court. He guides him. He tells him, you do one thing, you have some. You have some, uh, you know, Tulasi Tirth, a few drops, a few drops of uh, Tulasi Tirth, Panchamrita, whatever you take it and then wait. So you don't have to eat the whole food, but have that Panchamrita or whatever it is, have it. And that means you have broken the fast and the Pratham is successful and uh, let the sage come at any time, then you can serve him the food. And accordingly, the king breaks his fast by eating that Panchamrita. Okay. Then Dhrumvasa enters. And Durvasa was sitting there and the food was being served by the king. But Durvasa was so powerful. He could see the past. He could see, you know, with his vision, he could see this king had already eaten without serving me food. He is a disrespect. How could you do this? Immediately, he got so much annoyed. He threw the food out there. He stood up and with all the powers that he had, he created a monster. He created a monster and released the monster onto Ambarisha. What did Ambarisha do? Ambarisha immediately with his folded hands, he prayed to the God that he believed in. As he prayed, immediately Sudarshan Chakra, Sudarshan Chakra appeared in between and the Sudarshan Chakra had cut the monster into two halves, into two halves, had to cut the monster. After destroying the monster, the Sudarshan Chakra was still revolving, looking for the guy who created the master, monster. Then it started chasing, it started chasing Durvasa. And Durvasa ran from there to Shiva. Shiva, please save me. Shiva said, I cannot. Went to Brahma. Brahma said, finally, he went to even Vishnu. Please save me, protect me. Then Vishnu also said, I cannot do anything. Once the Chakra is released, you have to go to the person who, 
whose prayers were heard and it happened. And then, and then, you know, this is how the sage was running as Sudarshan Chakra was chasing him. And finally, he says, go back to the person. So the Durvasa came back and fell at the feet, at the feet of Ambarisha. And Ambarisha, oh my God, with all the respect. Muriji, Muriji, what are you doing? Come on, please get up, please get up, please, mom. Please excuse me, please forgive me. In fact, he was asking for forgiveness. And in fact, you know, no, 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 the sage was feeling very bad and he asked for forgiveness. And you know, the sage was received and the Sudarshan Chakra was withdrawn, was withdrawn at that time. This is the story. But what happened to the sage? What happened to the sage? The question is, what happened to the sage? He was a great sage to get those powers, to get those powers, years and years of penance in the forest without eating, drinking even water. Years and years they do penances to obtain his powers. But what happened on this day, in the fit of anger, in that fraction of the moment, he could not control his own anger and use all those powers for creating the monster and he lost them. He lost them. He lost all those powers for which he did so much of hard work, so much of effort, everything, just because he could not control his emotions, his emotion of anger. In that moment, he lost it. So that is the importance of having emotional intelligence and not having emotional intelligence. One is not emotional intelligence. Imagine the loss. Imagine the loss that one you know, it has been happening, it has been happening. And I have had my own experience in life. I'm sure you too have your experience in life. This is a topic which you're all aware of it, which you're all aware of it. Can you, can anyone recognize the names of the people? The, the, those who are there on the screen? Can somebody tell me the name? Who is this? Who is this? Sitting up there, sitting down here. Do you know this combination, who these two people are? If you could recognize, please unmute. Please unmute. Thank you, yeah, yes, yes, Vijay, Vijay, Vijay Kumarji, Vijay Kumarji. Did you answer? Did you say that? Yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir. Fantastic, absolutely. This is Dhritarashtra and this is uh, Sanjaya. Sanjaya, you know, Sanjaya, whereas as the Kurukshetra battle was being fought, in fact, Dhritarashtra was sitting here, Sanjaya was explaining to him, Sanjaya was was uh, telling him the every day that what, whatever is Sanjaya has the power of seeing whatever is happening there and he was describing it Dhritarashtra what's happening here and that time you know if you go through if you go through even uh, you know there's one sloka there's one sloka and in that sloka it says Sanjaya Bhavacha Yetra Yogeshwara Krishna Yetra Patho Dhanudharaha Tatra Sreer Vijayo Bhutir Dhruva Nitir Matir Mamam Yetra Yogeshwara Krishna Yetra Patho Dhanudharaha Tatra Sreer Vijayo Bhutir Dhruva Nitir Matir Mamam Means Yetra Yogeshwara Krishna Where there is the Krishna, who is you know, the calm, quiet, like a yogi, Yatra Yogeshwara Krishna, where there's a yogi, like balanced, emotionally balanced, Krishna was there. Yatra Padho Dhanudharaha, where there's a skillful, skillful Dhanudhara, skillful archer, Padha, Arjuna was there. Wherever there is, the yogi, like the cool, calm, quiet, balanced, emotionally balanced person like Krishna is there. And where there's a skillful person, skillful, all skillful person like Arjuna was there. Tratra Sthir Vijayo Bhutir Dhruva Nitir. There, the Vijayam, the Vijayam is certain. For sure, for sure, the victory is certain on the earth. And wherever both it through our needed matrimony, wherever it is, the, the victory is certain. So, what is that? I'm seeing it here. That means, you know, it is, even in one person, if you're so skillful, if you're highly skillful, but you don't have that emotional intelligence, you know, your victory cannot be certain. And you alone being emotionally intelligent but having no skills, that is also not 
good. But having skills along with the skills, along with the knowledge, if you're also having emotional intelligence, emotional intelligence, that is the combination which will help you become successful for sure, for sure. That's what I see here. Combination, combination of Krishna and Akshana, combination of skills and the emotional balance, you know, that makes you a sure winner and a great champion, a great champion, a great champion. No. We all see a lot of you know the IQ, IQ, you know, the somebody, somebody's intelligent, somebody's all that. For somebody's success, if somebody is very successful, we see we see that, you know, we see that on the surface of it, you know, what is visible is their knowledge, their skills, their you know, this is the thing. Skills and knowledge, their their qualifications, their MSc, PhD, or they are, um, you know, they, they the skills of speaking, skills of talking, skills of dealing with the people, skills, you know, skills, they are, their knowledge, their research, the publications and whatever it is, you know, that is only 10%, the knowledge, the intelligence, the intelligence question, IQ. But what is not seen, but what is actually contributing to the person's success, like an iceberg, like an iceberg, there's 80, 90 percent of it below the surface. So below the surface, within that, the emotional intelligence of the person, emotional intelligence of the person, that matters a lot for the success of a person, for the success of a person. Okay, that's what you say. So then what is emotion? What is the emotion? What is an emotion? Emotion is a feeling, right? Emotion, emotion, something in your mind. It's an emotion in the mind, in the brain, especially in the brain, especially the right side of the brain. Your right part of the brain, right brain is the one which controls your emotions, your intuitions, your spirituality, your, your, your kalapatvam, your, um, your feelings, you know, your, um, your, um, you know, that, that the creativity, your creativity, your, your, um, um, yeah, those are the, those are the things that are controlled by your right brain. And your left brain is the one about your IQ part. Your IQ part is covered by the left brain. Your logic, your analytical skills, your number skills, your um, your number skills, your, um, your data interpretation, your logical thinking, your rational, uh, rational approaches and all that. It's covered. It's on this side of the brain, that is left brain. But it's the right brain that you have to be. And usually, we are all developing. We are in the pursuit. While we are in the college, while we are in the school i know we're all developing the knowledge part the mugging part the gaining the knowledge part and this part of it and after late actually instead of developing this part instead of developing this part there is some kind of deterioration happening in this part because people off late if you look at maybe i don't know the kind of food we eat the kind of people we are may around with the kind of situation we are going to go through people are becoming more emotionally reactive nowadays than before so so it's this is where area of concern the area of concern where we have to give conscious attention so that we could we could be we could stop the deterioration we could build that emotional intelligence and um, i'm happy in this session like to interact with you on this so mainly you know this part this right side part right part of the brain is all these things then the left part is of the, all the numbers the left part is all the numbers thing and the right side part of the right brain is something that that gives all this okay now now can i have can i have in the chart box the uh different kinds of emotions that oh you can see that they have you can see that they, but let me stop it so let me see what you will write Okay, I want you to open the chart box and write down there the different kinds of emotions, the different kinds of emotions that we humans go through. What are the different kinds of emotions that we, the humans, go through at different times? The kind of emotions, can I have them written in the chart box? Come on. The emotions, what are the different types of, very good, Dr. Shivakumar writes here, anger. Sadness, excitement. Yes, certainly. Certainly. Anger is an emotion. Sadness is an emotion. Dukkha. Dukkha. Anger. Fear, absolutely. Fear is also an emotion. Fear is also an emotion. 100%. And excitement, you know, you are very excited. Yes, that's also an emotion. Absolutely. There are many, many other emotions. Humans go through a variety of emotions. Variety. Joy, anger, happiness. Sumangala ma'am, thank you so much. Joy, anger, happiness, joy, and the bliss. The bliss, you know. The, you're happy, you're joyful, 
and you blissful again different levels of emotion of happiness there happy satisfaction is yes. satisfaction satisfaction is also a satisfaction feeling blessed feeling blessed feeling blessed and anxiety in you know today if you go to facebook or you go to whatsapp also you know once you write something and at the end of it you can express your emotions are you sad are you happy doubly happy triply happy lovingly happy you can put you know you put a circle on the head you put three love symbols on the head you know you have different colors of uh, love symbols there and flowers what are crying 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 sad and crying pride being proud pride yeah that's also feeling huh? shame absolutely that is also feeling absolutely jodi raval ma'am absolutely even shame is also feeling exactly yeah shyness shyness and also shame both are there both are there yeah that's also feeling anxiety 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 curiosity anxiety anxiety worry 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 confusion confusion is also a state of emotion right what else what else what else what else very good very good thank you thank you so much that's right yes yes look at those emotions look at the number of kind of emotions happy sad content satisfied that's what you said angry grumpy this is another word for grumpy confused tired scared fear you said fear scared frightened another degree degree of fear okay hurt somebody hurt you you feeling hurt in your heart depressed anxious anxiety yes nervousness nervousness before that interview before going to the boss before something you know that nervousness being thoughtful silly annoyed frustrated bored excited surprised proud and pride you said interested keen you are keen interested out of control and embarrassed sometimes you feel embarrassed okay so these are different kinds of emotions and many other kinds of emotions that we go through many kinds of emotions we go through right we go through we go through many kinds of emotions and what is emotional intelligence we look at now we have seen what are the emotions and what is the emotional intelligence ei what is emotional intelligence ei right it is ability of an individual to recognize and understand emotions of yours and those people you interact mm -hmm. with it is the first ability of a person ability of your ability to recognize and understand your own emotions and those are the people whom you are interacting with and that is not the end of it that is not the complete intelligence so the first place your ability to recognize and the first recognizing then understanding the emotions of your own emotions and the person you are dealing with and then the skill to use that awareness to efficiently manage yourself and your relationships with others so in the first place is the ability to recognize oh presently i am going through this emotion what is the kind of emotion you are going through so your ability to recognize and understand first your own emotion and when you are speaking with somebody when you are arguing with somebody when you are having a debate with somebody or when you are having a meeting with somebody or you know you are talking to at that time the other person is also going through some kind of emotions So it's important for you to recognize and understand your own emotions at the same time recognize the emotions of the other person and then accordingly it's not that you alone you this is you're dealing with another person so what that person is presently going through is he also angry if he is angry should you be a bit quiet or is he excited is he confused is he very sad what is the kind of feeling that he is going through right now right now so understanding that and then using that awareness so that you you have no control on his emotions you have no control whatsoever on his or her emotions you have control only on your emotions so you understand your emotion that other person emotion and then you manage your emotions so that you manage your relationship with those people that is what that is what that's what 
EQ spells the difference between successful people and underachievers. Those people who are vastly successful, who are not so successful, what is the difference? The difference is their ability, their ability to have this emotional intelligence. That's it. So here, so there are four steps here. The first step is perceiving the emotions. You perceive in that situation, you be conscious, be bad, be bad. So right now, I'm having these emotions. So perceiving, first of all, your own emotions. Are you sad? Are you happy? Are you excited? Are you confused? Are you becoming angry? Some anger is coming out. Are you becoming, you know, somewhat angry with whatever is going on there? So what is the kind of emotion? Because your brain is hearing and then again started reacting. Your right brain is working now. So, but what kind of of emotion your right brain is having you perceive it first be be conscious of it and then you perceive other person's emotions also. not only yours it's important here we have to see what is the likely uh, you by observing that person because in, in his face you can see the eyes you can see the cheeks you can see you can feel when a person is angry or if a person is smiling and happy you can feel that emotion so understand your emotion perceive and understand your emotion and the emotion of other persons first perceive understand and then use this knowledge use that awareness use that awareness to manage those, your own emotions. So first perceive, understand, use it to manage your own emotions. That's it. You cannot manage others' emotions. If you manage your own emotions, the others' managing emotions will be managed by themselves. By themselves. So what you have is, you know, in your control, in your control is emotional intelligence. In your control is emotional intelligence. Emotional intelligence. We're talking about this, though I began with a story, story of Ambarisha and Durvasa to highlight to highlight the importance of emotional intelligence but can i can i request you to kindly uh, write down if a person is having a good emotional intelligence what are the benefits are if the person is not having emotional intelligence what are the losses what are the losses to an individual can i have you you can unmute an answer or you can write in the chat box can i have your answers please the benefits having Good emotional intelligence are the losses due to lack of emotional intelligence. Yes. Doctor, yeah, okay, great, great. Yes, Dr. Shiv Kumar writes here that he will be an achiever with, with emotional intelligence. People are better achievers, higher achievers, higher productivity. Very good. Jyoti Rabal, ma'am, writes here, socio-personal relationships will become better with good emotional intelligence. With proper emotional balance and intelligence, we can maintain good socio, uh, social personal relationship with other people. Madhu Smidadi writes here, better management of relationships at home and also in the office and also in our area of work. Better management relationships with people at home, at home, with spouse, with children, with relatives, with siblings, brothers, sister, parents, children. My God, my God, you know, we go through lots of emotions there. And, you know, if we don't have relation and emotional balance, there are opportunities to lose the relationships. And the relationships, to develop those relationships, it has taken years and years of time. Now, in that fit of anger, in that fraction of moment, because of use of that one wrong word, one wrong word, now the relationship is broken. It's broken once and for all. And that's hurting. That's hurting. That's hurting. Vinutam. Vinutam and It will become easy to understand other people if we have emotions. Yes, yes. If we have emotions and emotions, emotions have to be there. Emotions have to be there. It's not that emotional intelligence does not mean not having emotions. Emotional intelligence means having emotions, having emotions, but the ability to deal with those emotions. Absolutely. Education, it's friendly approach with other people. Empathy will develop empathy. Absolutely. That's a good word. Good word. Empathy is a good word. Empathy, you put yourself, 
in other shoes. You see it from others' point of view. You start looking things at the other's angle, in the other person's angle. That is empathy. That is empathy. If I were in your position, what I would do? How I would be there? So if I put myself in your position, that means I am becoming empathetic. Very good. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. That's good. That's good. That's good. Let's let's get going. Let's get going. Okay. Okay. Great. Great. Look at this. Look at this. Okay. Why is it helps people handle adversity, adversity and setbacks? You know, there will be pandemic situations, a big setback, big, a big adversity, big adversity. Oh my God! In February this year, I went through COVID infection. COVID infection. I went travel to Kolkata to conduct the training program for a seed company. Came back, developed fever, got tested, and tested positive. What to do? Oh my God! Yeah, in February this year, I went through COVID infection. But I told myself, I'm a warrior. I'm a warrior. But the song that I showed you, I'm a warrior. I posted it in February on my YouTube channel. When I was going through, when I was going through the COVID infection, I'm a warrior. Yes, I'm going to conquer, conquer this. Of course, you know, that is an adversity. My family members are worried. My wife is worried. My children are worried. And they were asking me, would you like to go to the hospital? And what do you do? I told myself, yes, there is an opportunity. God is great. He is taking me through this to make me stronger, to make me better, to make me fitter. This is the time for me. Those 14, 15 days of isolation. Yeah, they, that gave me an opportunity. Yes. Yeah, it helped me. It helped me. Teaches people to cope up with uncertainty. It's there. And, you know, working with people means working with, of course, you know, you can maintain the relationships, better relationships, your productivity will go up and the many benefits. And yes, working with people means working with emotions. Period. Underline. Capital letters. Working with people means working with emotions. Because after all, Human beings have the emotions. Human beings have feelings. Humans have feelings. And because of the feelings, they have emotions. Emotions. So we have to accept the fact we are all working with people. That means directly we are actually working with their emotions. We are working with the emotions. So we have to work with them. We have to work with them. So how do we develop and acknowledge? First of all, acknowledge that emotions are always present. And doing something intelligent with them. People derail. People derail their careers because of emotional failings. Not the lack of technical skills, knowledge, and all that. Just because you don't know, you don't, you didn't know how to deal with your boss. Boss ne kuch bola. And straight away, my be Pasco Mooper Boldia. What happened? What happened? Boss said something wrong, something utterly wrong, utterly ridiculous, meaningless, not at all proper. Being a boss, being in that position, he should not have said that. It is not at all good. But what did you do when boss said that? Did you have your emotions under control? You kept quiet. You allowed him to tell, or oh, shout, he was shouting, he was using wrong words, but you took all of it, sit quietly, he looked up to him, and quietly, when the conversation is over, you walked up to the room. You walked up to the room. He is the man, the only one. What are you telling, sir? What are you talking, sir? This is not correct, sir. Did you react? What did you do that day? Some people who didn't know how to deal in those difficult situations, who lost emotional balance, they derailed their careers. The career khatam ho gaya. I know some examples. So we have to be, you know, there's big losses, you know, poor EQ versus high EQ. You know, you tell me out of these two people, the two faces there, which face, this is the right one or the left one? Who you think is having higher EQ? Left or right? And if uh, the emotional intelligence is not proper, you could, the people will have relationship problems at home and poor decision making capability, rage and anger and, uh, you know, disturbances in the workplace and fail you to advance the career. 
polluted ones. This happened to lots of people just because they are very knowledgeable, they are very hardworking, they have a lot of talent, they are very talented. They are very talented. But they could not advance in the career and reach the top position just because they do not have the emotion. Just because. They don't have emotion. And there are some people who are not so capable. They are not so talented. They are not so skillful. They don't have that much knowledge. But they are occupying the top positions today. How? They, they knew how to deal with people, especially the bosses. Especially the bosses. Agree with me? Agree with me? Yes, sir. Can you yes, sir. Please write yes in the chat box. Yes, thank you. Thank you so much. So now, now we'll spend some time on how to have to, you know, deal with emotions. Can we master our emotions? The question is, you know, emotions to hona chahiye. Emotions nahi hai to aadmi aur janwar ke beech mein koi antar nahi hota. If those emotions, there would not be any difference between a man and an animal. Being a human, you have to have emotions and you should enjoy those emotions. You must, when you are feeling happy, you must feel really happy. You must jump with joy and say, yes, wow, well, my, my child got school first, my child got admission IIT. Yes, my child is got a job and I got a promotion and my meeting is successful and wow, and celebrate and be happy. Yeah. Yes. And. Govind, Govind, Bihare Saab, Aapka Microphone. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. You know, but sometimes sad things do happen. Sad things do happen. You know, somebody lost someone in the family. Someone is lost in the family. Pita Ji Ka Dehant Ho. So it's a sad thing, a loss to the family, and you're feeling so sad. Feel the sadness. Let tears flow down your eyes. Let tears flow down your eyes. Cry, cry, cry. Heartfully. Cry as much as you want. Cry loudly. You can sob. Go through it. Go through it. It's part of love. Sometimes my excitement, some nervousness. Hey, today boss is meeting. Hai. Our director is coming. What do I have to do? He wants to say something. Today meeting is my presentation. Hai. Thoda kuch nervousness. Ah, I'm going, how am I going to do? Achha karunga, nahi karunga. How is it going to be? You feel some nervous. Enjoy that nervousness. Enjoy. Sometimes you know you have to be nervous. Enjoy the nervousness. And some some confusion. Yeah, but you enjoy the confusion. Ah, what do I do? He gets confusion. Do that. You know. But enjoy. The question here is the question is. Whether you are having emotions or not is not the question. You have to have the emotions. You have to enjoy the emotions. But the question is whether you are having the emotions in your grip or you are in the grip of your emotions. You are in the grip of your emotions without having any control or you have the control on your emotions. That is the question. So with emotional intelligence, you can have your emotions in your country. That's what. But how is it possible? Is it easy? Is it easy? It's easier said than done. It's easier said than done. But we can we can endure. We can gradually develop. We can master. We can master. We can master. It is something we can cultivate. It is something. It is something that happens. Yes, it is possible. It is possible. How it is? I'm taking a view. We're going to take it. How it is? Can you recognize? This temple, where is it from? What is the name of the temple and the place where it is? Can anyone recognize this temple? Mysore. Mysore? No, sir. Mysore? No, I don't know whether in Mysore you have this. Mysore architecture. Oh, no. yeah. oh, no, no. This is the architecture in, in, in Varissa, absolutely Varissa. Yes, this is like, you know, in uh, Kalinga architecture, it looks like this. Absolutely, this is in Varissa, but not Konark. Where is it? It's a temple. It's a temple. Where is it? You know, Puri, Puri, 
Puri, yeah, it looks very close to Puri. The Puri Jagannath Mandir also looks very much like this. But uh, this place is not Puri Jagannath Mandir. It is Lingaraj. Yes, who said that? Oh my God, somebody recognized it. Kabya Jyoti Bora recognized it. Great. Absolutely, this is Lingaraj Mandir in Bhubaneshwar. Bhubaneshwar, Bhubaneshwar. Ishwar has chosen the place to come and reside in Lingaraja temple. My God, it's a very, a very, very old temple. And in the temple premises, you have nearly 108 or 120 temples within the premises of this Lingaraja Mandir temple. You know, about five, six years ago, I happened to go to, I happened to go to, um, you know, Bhubaneswar to conduct a training program for Nagarjuna Group Companies, salespeople. They all came from different parts of the country. We flew down on the 17th of that month, um, June or July, I don't remember, but June or July 17th, I remember the date. And we went there and that day, that was day one. The local manager said, sir, we have, uh, uh, we were actually staying in Kalinga Institute of Technology and Science, which is about 12 to 13 kilometers away from, away from this uh, temple. So he said, sir, we have Lingaraj Mandir. Would you like to go and see? Myself and two other friends from Hyderabad, um, Dr. Mahala and Mr. Ravi Kishore, we three went from Hyderabad to do the training program. So what happened? Sir, yes, sir, sure, sure, we will go. And then he gave us, uh, he gave us his vehicle, driver. And, you know, as we left that place, and there's not much of rain. As we went towards the temple, you know, as we were approaching, he started raining cats and dogs oh my god when we were there in front of the temple it was pouring rain was heavy what to do should we get down when we even to see that there's the, a the blackout and there's no power busily kiwi in you know, a cutting away okay. you know the electricity was cut no electricity at that time it was raining Kyakare. should we continue to stay there there's already evening around six or seven o'clock so we came back manager nipucha Darshan, kaisa was up? Humne bole de darshan, nahi hua, because, because it is not so much of rain here, but there was so much of rain there. So he said, don't worry, sir, tomorrow you can go. Uh, tomorrow after the training program, at the end of the program, you can go. So next day, again, the program was over by 6, 6.30. It's over. Immediately we went, we had our shower and all that, and we changed the clothes, and we want to go for darshan around 7 o'clock or so. We started, and on the way, there is what is Khan Mandir. You know, a friend of mine called from that Mandir, said, we want to come. So I asked these two people, please, please, please. And they told us clearly one thing. This Lingaraj Mandir closes at 8 o'clock, so you have to go before that. I sent him, it's only 7.50, 7.20. We'll quickly go to Iskan Mandir and Vahanse. Uh, yes, we'll go. And then we went there and by 7.50, 10 minutes before 8 o'clock itself, we were there right in front of Lingaraj Mandir. And as we were getting down from the car, somebody came in front of us and said, Sir, Mandir, Band ho gaya. Mandir band hai abhi. Hey, kaise band hota hai? It's not 8 o'clock. It's only 7.50. They said, no sir, today there are no special pujas or something. It's not a jaldi hi band ho gaya. It got close to me. You know, we, what to do? Came back again, 12-15 kilometers. Mayan Adra, sir, darshan kaise hua? Darshan, aaj bhi nahi hua. It did not happen even today. So don't worry, sir, tomorrow again. But the next day evening, we were to take the flight back to Hyderabad. So he said, go in the morning, sir. Go in the morning because the training starts at nine o'clock. So we thought, okay, six, th six o'clock we'll go and we'll have a darshan come back. Our mother sub said, no, we cannot come. So Ravi Kishore and I said, we too, we too, we agreed. And we got up at five o'clock and we had the white clothes, uh, Pajma, Kutta, and all that. You know, we went there by six o'clock itself. We were there. Nobody was there. Only two of us. You know, we waited, we waited till 6.30, the temples, Gopuram's main door to be open, you know, 6.30 it got open and we went inside and then, you know, and then the main temple was also not open yet. So we visited a few more temples and finally we went there and we went there, there are two or three other people, nobody was there. You know, we were asked to stand at a distance, the Garpa Gruha, the Sanctum Sanctorum, in fact, is away from the place and some, some, Pujaris, they did some puja and then what they did, they removed this rope and they asked us to come in. And we went into the sanctum sanctorum, the Garbhagruha. We were there for 10, 15 minutes doing archana and all those things. We asked them to do it and we had such a great time. Wonderful. Hari Hara. 
Hari Hara. You can see both of them there. That is called Lingaraj Mandir. Inside the Garbha Guru, we were there for 10, 15 minutes. And you know, when we came out, when we came out, Ravi Kishore asked me, Sir, do you know why we did not get Darshan yesterday and day before? I said, why? Usually, the evening time Darshans happen from that place far. You won't be allowed to come into the, there's a lot of crowd and the rope will be kept. You have to see from a distance. Only in the morning at that time only you are allowed inside. Sir, Bhagavan ne jab bhangu itna achcha darshan dena chahte hain, wo kal aur paso kyo andarana dete hain. The God did not to allow us inside yesterday and before because he wanted to give us this beautiful, blissful darshan. Yesterday what? Day before yesterday what? We are feeling so sad. Oh, yaar, we gaya, darshan nahi hua. Aur agla day, darshan hua to. If we had darshan the previous day, we would not have gone. And we would not have got this kind of darshan. So when something happened, you know, we felt bad. But can, can we take it? Everything happens for good. If we can take it, because we go through life, we go through lots of ups and downs, lots of incidents in life. So can we believe in the philosophy, our philosophy, our ancestral Indian philosophy, everything happens for good. You agree with me? You agree with me, please write. G for good, G for good, right? Letter G, letter G for good, letter G for good. You know, I'll tell you one more small story here. One more, one more small story here. You know, Amitabh Bachchan, Amitabh Bachchan's father's name is Harivan Shrai Bachchan. Harivan Shrai Bachchan. Harivan Shrai Bachchan. Harivan Shrai Bachchan was a great poet, Hindi poet. Even I, I remember reading his poem, one of his poems as my poetry book. You know, in 10th, 10th standard or so. He's a great poet. And those days, when Amitabh Bachchan was a kid, he was admitted to a school in Nainital, a boarding school, because he was a well to do. I remember Shrai Bachchan, Unka Khandam, he was a very well to do person, had enough money. So he had sent his son to a boarding school. So Amitabh Bachchan was studying in a boarding school. In fact, this story was shared by Amitabh Bachchan himself in one of the shows. You know, he, he shared this. So he said, you know, Amitabh Bachchan was, he was prepared that for the annual day celebration, the parents were all coming, his parents were also to come. But Amitabh Bachchan wanted to give a pleasant surprise to his parents. So he was preparing what he was doing. He was, he was practicing, singing one of the poems of his own father. So he wanted to go on to the stage that day and he wanted to sing and make his parents proud and happy. But then what happened on that day? Amitabh Bachchan got some fever and health issue. So immediately he had to be taken to hospital and he was admitted in the hospital. His parents came to the school. They were sent, they were told that son was in the school uh, hospital. So they also went to the hospital. There Amitabh Bachchan was lying on the bed, very much frustrated, very much depressed, very much depressed. So father asked him, Beta, kya hua? what happened? Why are you so sad? What happened? Papa, you know, I planned one thing and something else happened. I'm very sad and very, you know, uh, depressed. So what happened? So Papa, I practiced like this. I did so much of practice. I planned so much. I did so much of practice. I wanted to present it on the stage and look at me. Now all my plans have gone. Now I'm in this hospital bed. That's why I'm not happy. Then his father told him, you know, जो भी आपका जब आपका मन की बात जब आपके मन की बात होता है वो अच्छा है जब नहीं होता है और भी अच्छा है then is when you think of something and it happens it's good and if it does not happen it is better ये कैसे पापा how how is it better then his father told him बेटा when it is not happening according to your plan it is happening according to his plan. And his plan for you is always better than your own plan for you. Because he knows from your first day to the last day, your entire journey he knows. And he knows what is best for you. Something is not happening according to your plan and his plan is better. That's why whatever happens, happens for good. Happens for good. 
Can we go with that? So can we think whatever happens, happens for our good only? Yes or yes? Hello? Can you unmute and answer? You have the power to unmute. Just press on the red button, unmute, answer and immediately mute it. Can we think whatever happens, happens for our good only? Yes, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. for. Yes, yes, Thank you. Thank you, sir. Please unmute and immediately mute. Immediately mute, but unmute. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Can you recognize, can you people recognize this person? What is the sport he plays and what is his name? Can someone recognize this person? He is a black player, an American player. He has won the Grand Slams, Wimbledon champion, as well as US Open champion. He has won a couple of championships. He won the, he won the Wimbledon champion. He was a great player. What's his name? He was born in 1943. He became Wimbledon champion in 1975. He contracted HIV, AIDS. In 1988, and he died in 1993. And his name is Arthur Ashe Jr. What a champion he was! He was a great champion on the court and a great human off the court. People loved him. He used to have fans all over the world, all over the world. And he had some issue, and he had to go to the hospital for some blood-related uh, infusion. And in that process, he contracted HIV. Sadly, you know, by the time he realized it was too late and he knew that he would be dying soon. And even the world knew that he would be dying soon. And he was getting a number of letters from his fans all over the world. Men, women, they were all writing letters to him and they were, you know, expressing their grief, their sorrow and their prayers for saving him. And one of those letters was his assistant was reading. Ardu, there's a letter for you from your fan. And the fan, your fan is asking you, have you ever questioned the God? You are such a wonderful player. You are such a wonderful person. You are a gentleman. You are a kind person. You are so good. But why God has chosen you for this deadly disease? For this deadly disease? That was the question asked. Then you know what Ardu has responded to that? Adur has responded that, you know, if you take the world, there will be about 5 million people who play some, some game or the other. Some game or the other. Out of 5 million people, that means 50 lakh people, 5 lakh people, 5 lakh people play perhaps tennis. Out of 5 lakh people, 50,000 people play at school level or college level. Out of 50,000 people, you know, uh, 5,000 people play at their uh, national level. Out of 5,000 people, 500 people play the ATP, Association of Tennis Professional Circuit. Out of 500 people, 50 people could get the opportunity to play Wimbledon in Wimbledon tournament. And out of those 50 people, four people reach semifinals and two people reach finals. And ultimately, one person stands on the podium holding the trophy aloft. And when I was holding the trophy out there, then I did not ask the God, why have you chosen me for this? I did not ask him on that day and I would not ask him today. I know I have a purpose and I've come onto this planet. God has brought me. I, I, I trust in God. I go by God and I have not asked I have not asked, why me? How about you? How about you? You also go through. You know, we all go through difficulties. We all go through difficulties. Very, very big difficulties. Why do you give me a gift? Why do you give me a gift? Why do you give me a gift? Why me only? What did I do? What wrong did I do? What sin I did they do? Why problems come only to me? As if, you know, the problems come only to you. I don't know whether you went through this. Sometimes even I, uh, I felt that, you know, God, why I'm such a good person. I never did any harm to anybody. But why did I get this problem? Even, you know, that's there in the mind. But look at him. Look at him. There is something that we could learn from these people, these people. You know, this is a paddy field. 
is a paddy field in my native place. In my native place, you know, the farmers and nowadays, of course, they're using tractors. But this is some years ago. Some years ago, you know, the paddy cultivation that happens in this manner, so much of drudgery, so much of difficulty. Then you plant, then you plant. The crop looks so good, but then suddenly, when the crop is nearing harvest. You have the November cyclones, and in the cyclone, the entire crop lodges get submerged under water. If the water does not go off in a matter of two or three days, you would lose all the crop. The crop germinates, and you will have a problem. You will have a problem. You will have a problem. You have to somehow survive this, secure this. And I had to, I had to, you know, visit my village, and I asked my mama, my mama, my maternal uncle, mama, what happened? What happened? Your effort, your entire effort. Such a hard work! Oh my God, the crop is lost. Oh my God, I was expressing my 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 unhappiness, my worry, my sadness that he was losing the whole crop. Do you know what my mama, the farmer, said? My mama, the farmer, he said, "Hey, a glass isn't both bhuriya hoga. Next year it will be very good. Next year it will be very good." My God, I was thinking of what's happening there, and he was hoping, he was hopeful. The next season will be better. The next year will be better. The next year will be better. That hope, that hope, that hope. I could learn from my mama that day. Yes, the better days are ahead. Jo bhi ho raha hai, it is happening for my betterment. The something better is waiting for me. Something better is waiting for me. Something better is waiting for me. I did not get this. I lost this. I missed this. But something better is waiting for me. What a what a way of reconciling. What a way of enduring. Endurance. That's called endurance. That's called that will give you resilience. Life is like a coffee. I'm sharing some stories with you. Of course, I hope you are enjoying these stories. If you're enjoying these stories, stories, type yes in the chat box, please. If you're enjoying the stories. This is another story. You know, these days you see lots of uh, um, you know people going back to their alma mater, the college where they studied. Alumni, the particular batch meeting, coming together and meeting. The alumni meets. They call it. You know, once an alumni. Once an alumni had they get together on the campus, so people came from all the towns back to the campus. They were all having great time, and their professor, their professor who taught them, was there on the campus. He invited them to his home for a cup of coffee, and they all went there. They were sitting there about ten, twelve of them. Ten, twelve of them were there. The professor um, served them the coffee. So in the coffee in the kettle in a big kettle they brought the cup coffee there coffee there and then he kept the cups on the tea pot on the tea pot he he kept the cups but you know he didn't have all the twelve cups of the same size same color same make he didn't have all the cups of the same type he had some uh, four or five very good porcelain imported cups and very good cups laopla laopla type cups he had and then he had the uh, Two or three, two or three uh, local make uh, ceramic cups, and he had a couple of steel glasses and a couple of uh, glasses, glasses, okay, and a few paper cups. Paper cups are also there. So what happened? He asked these uh, students, who are his students, he asked them to sell themselves, to sell themselves. So the guys who went first, what they did. They took those better-looking cups and they served the coffee. The guys who went next, they used the you know the local make. Then the other guys used some steel glasses. Then the final guys used those paper cups. Finally, they all served. They all came back, sat there. They were holding the cups. They are holding the cups and they were sipping the coffee. They were sipping the coffee. But what kind of thoughts are going in their mind? The guy who was holding the paper cup, what bloody this professor! What was he doing all along all these years? He could not buy even cups. Bloody! What is this coffee? He is giving in paper cup. Huh? Other guy was thinking, you know, the guy with this. Oh, he was holding the cup. Ah, uh, yes, he could get a better cup, and he was uh, feeling a little better. But in between this guy, there is other guys. Different guys were going through different feelings based on the kind of cup they were holding. But actually, they were all drinking the same coffee. The same coffee, 
they are not eating the cup but they are drinking the same coffee but while drinking the same coffee the way they are savoring the coffee they are enjoying the coffee they are the flavor of the coffee are they enjoying that are going by themselves comparing comparing with others they were going through those emotions without actually enjoying the smell and taste of the coffee yes yes it happens with you with me also with all of us whenever we go you know we go by this we compare ourselves oh unka gaadi kaisa hai unka gaadi kaisa hai unka gaadi bada hai to mera ka kya hai if he has got imported audi car mere ko kya ho raha hai jalan ho raha hai kya am i happy am i happy or am i happy what is your happiness you are having your you are maruti ka you are having your small car whatever it is what is that But that Maruti car is good enough for you, and you are happy with that. How would you? Are is this kind of comparison? Is this kind of comparison with us? What kind of feelings and emotions is giving you? You have to take care of it. Take care. The other small story that I want to share with you. Once a grandfather was sharing a story to his grandchild. Grandchild. Once upon a time, there were two wolves. One black wolf. And one white wolf, and they're different, beta. They're different. You know, the black wolf is always very angry wolf, very angry, very cruel, very crooked, and very unkind, very, very much, you know, dangerous. There is another one, the white wolf, very calm, quiet, balanced, loving, harmonious. you know very pleasant very polite very happy balanced wolf <laughs> dadaji dadaji which wolf is stronger is it black wolf or white wolf out of these two wolves the black wolf which is very very cruel very angry very much annoyed very much you know disturbed very much frustrated always short tempered you know that wolf Quite calm, balanced. Um, you know all those. You know good emotions. That one. Which one is stronger? You tell me. You tell me which one is stronger. What do you think? Which wolf is stronger out of these two? You know what? His dada ji told him. His dada ji told him. The beta. Out of these two wolves, the wolf. Which you feed the most, that becomes the strongest. The one you feed most, what kind of emotions you are feeding to yourself? In fact, both these wolves are there in our mind, and we have in our mind also. The black wolf is there, the white wolf is there. Both are there in your mind as well as my mind. We have these two wolves in our mind also. But what are we feeding our mind with? Are we feeding our mind with love, compassion, care, kindness? What is that? What is that? Ah, hatred, jealousy. You know all the negative emotions, negativity. What are we feeding with? Like Dada ji said, what are the emotions? What are you feeding? You are feeding most of the positive emotions to your mind. that gives you the positivity the balance that you require that's how it's important that we have to we are all the time feeding we are all the time feeding we are all the time feeding knowingly or unknowingly consciously or unconsciously we are feeding what are we feeding we have to be careful we have to be careful you know very well we have to be careful and there's a principle called nike tan principle this is given by stephen covey this man is a great author stephen covey stephen covey stephen covey you know he wrote a book called the um, seven habits of highly effective people which is sold in millions of copies and also he wrote another book the seven habits of highly effective families families as a there's also another good book and in that you know he he talks about he talks about 90 10 principle 90 10 principle what is this 90 10 principle this 90 10 principle what ever the kind of emotions you go through whatever the situation you go through 
the kind of emotions suppose you're so angry or so frustrated or so happy whatever it is the external influence is only 10 percent 90 percent is how you respond to it the external the external influence is only 10 percent and the actual thing that your emotions are more controlled by 90 percent of how you react you react Suppose, you know, you're almost getting ready. You're getting ready to go to your office and you you had your bath and you were wearing that white shirt, nice shirt, and you came down there and you are having your your breakfast and uh, your wife has given you that idli, dosa, water, sambar and everything. And she kept a cup of coffee there, cup of coffee there. And your child was also ready to go to school and your child was ready to go, go to school and she was also getting ready. She completed her breakfast and in her hurry, she hit that coffee cup. And the coffee spilled over, fell on your white shirt. What did you do? What did you do at that time? What are you doing? Can they carry that Are you blind? What happened to you? Did you raise your hand? What did you do? And your chain started crying, you know. Your chain started crying. And you know, in the meantime, your wife came and she was trying to cool her down. And you went upstairs. You went upstairs. And by the time you know, um, you wanted to, um, the school bus came. The school bus came. Your child is crying, and she could not get into the school bus. She could not get into the school bus. And the bus left. And you came down. And then you had to drop today your child at the school. So ultimately, you took your child because you were getting late to the office. So what did you do? You drove, you drove first your child to the school and your child got down from the car. Today, today she did not turn back. She did not say, Papa, bye-bye, I love you, Papa. She did not say. She quietly got down the car and went into the school without waving at you. And then you were getting late to the office, so you were driving very fast and the traffic police stopped you and find you for over speeding and finally you landed at your office and you opened the door of your car to get down and realize that you missed your briefcase your office briefcase in the home itself right and go to the office and then the evening when you come back home your wife is silent she was not speaking much you are not speaking much and some kind of silence was happening and silence the bahut bhayanak hota hai silence is sometimes very deadly you know it's frightening it's frightening somebody has to speak something and silence was prevailing in the home because of what happened the way you shouted at the morning the way you shouted at your small kid at your home in the morning changed the whole same situation imagine the child hit the coffee cup the coffee fell on your shirt. You took a moment. You passed. You understood the situation. You passed. Said, and your child is a bit, uh, you know, uh, worried. Said, no, don't worry, beta. Don't worry. Don't worry. It happens. It happens. It's not your fault. Galti se ho gai. By mistake, it happened. Don't worry. Don't worry. Come on. Take care. No problem. No, don't, no issues. Okay. You get ready. Go to the school. Okay. Let me go up and change the dress. You didn't react. You rather passed and responded. Responded with balance. And your child said, love you, Papa. Thank you. Sorry, Papa. I'm really sorry, Papa. Love you, Papa. And she gave you a kiss on your cheek. And okay, Papa. Bye-bye. And she went. She took her bus. And she went to the office. And you went up. And in the meantime, your wife got your lunchbox ready, your bag ready. And she gave the bag. And you drove that down. And you felt so good that your child, you know, you, you felt so good. For the behavior, for the composure, for the balance you possessed in that moment. So, 10%, the folly that your child's action is only 10%. 90% of what followed is totally dependent on how you react to the situation. This is how it happens. This is how. And the one the important thing is how can you be, can you be balanced? Can you be balanced? Can you be balanced? Can you be balanced? Okay. So the, the yeah, and exactly the last thing that I would like to share here is about life. You know, what do you think is the boomerang? 
is a boomerang. They call it a boomerang. Boomerang is something when you throw it, it goes some distance and again comes back to you. You throw it, it comes back to you. That's boomerang. Okay. Similarly, you know, life also, life is an eco. Whatever we give, it comes back to us. It comes back to the multiples. It comes back to the multiples. Yes, sir. Yes. 100%. It comes back to the multiples in this life itself. You see, Janamme, we get it back. Yes. You know, have you ever tried going to a palace, a palace, and a big building, or a, or a fort? In Hyderabad, we have Golconda Fort, you know. And uh, yeah, you have forts, and you, see, you go there and you say, hello. You will say, hello, no, 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 no. You hear that you go, right? You go. You say, hey. Hey, 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 you know, if you say, love you, you will say, love you, love you. you say, hate you, hate you, hate you. It equals, it equals at home and also in the office. Fill your heart with love, with mind with compassion, mind with compassion, kindness, and be kind to yourself. Be kind to yourself. Most importantly, not only being kind, we are, you are mostly kind to other people, but if you have emotional intelligence, means you are first becoming kind to yourself and you deserve it. That is a platinum rule. That is a platinum rule is that you be to yourself what you want to be to others. Be unto yourself what you want to be for others. Generally, you are kind to others. But are you kind to yourself? Are you taking good care of your health, your physical health, your intellectual health, your mental health, your health? Are you taking care of it? Take care of it. Take care of it, especially the mental health, the emotional health. There's a lot of room and opportunity for you and for me, for everyone out there in today's scenario to develop this emotional balance, emotional intelligence. At the end of the day, emotional intelligence is nothing but first gaining that awareness, becoming aware. When you're going through, when, you know, you go through the emotion. When you're going through the emotion, hey, Shiva, Shiva, you're becoming angry. You're becoming angry. Okay, 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 okay. You, you tell yourself, you become aware and try to understand who you're going through anger now. And what about your spouse? What about your, your boss? What about your subordinate? Who are you dealing with at that moment? In that moment, what is that person? What kind of emotional person is going through? You perceive that. You perceive, you can easily perceive that by the tone of the pitch, voice of the pitch, the words being used, the eyes, you can perceive it. Oh, he's also going through emotion. She's also going through emotion. At that moment, you have control, balance, use your emotional intelligence and that will help you save your relationships and make you more successful, make you more successful in life. Okay, that's what, and let's summarize emotion that is essential for career success. 100%, it is essential. Emotions can be controlled. Yes, they can be controlled like that, like that, like that, you know, as you just snap your fingers. Man nirnay karne ka hai. I am not responding. I am, you know, you are chup ho jau, chup ho jau, you know. Yes, you have to decide from today, from this moment onwards, I am becoming more and more emotionally intelligent. I will have control. I will have control on my emotions. I will not be controlled by my emotions. I will have emotions in my grip. The rona hai to ronga, the hasna hai to hasunga. But under my control. Yes. Emotions can be controlled. So emotional intelligence is nothing but first becoming aware of your emotions and others' emotions and then managing your emotions. You cannot manage others' emotions. Never forget about managing others. You cannot manage any, not your wife, not your son, not your daughter, not your father, not your mother, not your boss, not your subordinate, not the fuel in your office. Never, never try to control others' emotions. But you have total control on your emotions. So please manage your emotions. And today, we, these are some of the tips I gave you. And most intelligence, everything happens for good. That kind of thing, you know, to be Bhagwan ka Thank you, God. Thank you. He takes you through some struggles to make you better and stronger. Have faith in God. Complete faith in God. Bhagwan ka 
you know he knows everything mere ko jab dena hai jab dega wo you know have the faith in god be hopeful from that farmer rice farmer my mama that's what i learned don't compare this comparison leads to lot of emotional disturbances comparing comparison 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 never compare don't compare this comparison never ends if you start comparing wo kabhi khatam nahi hota if you compare with this tomorrow you become that compare with somebody else okay feed the positive emotions like the white wolf white wolf feed that positivity not the negativity a 90 10 principle 90% is in your control yes and life is a nico life is a cop can i have a small declaration from you yes please stretch your hand unmute unmute your microphones please everybody please unmute your microphones and say i know emotional intelligence helps me i know emotional something thank you very much thanks to all of you please take good care of your health and your safety safety stay strong stay safe stay healthy god bless you all thank you thank you thank you very much thank you thank you sir thank you sir i uh, anybody would like to give feedback about this vijay kumar sir oh, vijay kumar sir go ahead sir please vijay kumar sir go ahead today session is like that your name is shiva prasad no it's like a shiva prasad your shiva was given a prasad in the form of you Wait. that's all i i don't want to say much more shiva was given a prasad to people or audience through you that is shiva prasad we got today love you sir love you vijay kumar sir feeling blessed god bless you sir love you sir thank you sir that's yes, enough sir, sir. i'm thank feeling you. blessed oh my god what a powerful feedback you have given me thank you sir god bless you subhangala ji um, sir it was a very nice uh, session sir and the examples given were very nice sir and it was really very interesting and uh, it made the examples were such that we could understand the concept very well sir and uh, it was really very informative sir thank you thank you ma'am thank you for your excellent participation ma'am you were assistant director of agriculture still participated like a small college student who participated so enthusiastically you did that i could see that in you thank you so much and god bless you ma'am so apart from uh, your uh, nice presentation i yes, like your uh, i like your energy level sir <laughs> uh, how you are maintaining this energy level very high at, even at this stage this age uh, oh my god that's really, that's that's really nice and fantastic and may i pray may god bless you to oh, you, you to maintain thank this energy level sir thank you thank, thank you sir. sir sir people like you give me the energy sir the way you participated the way you contributed the way you are you know you are you, you are participating the response that i am getting that those things that keep me energetic and thank you thank you for that thank you very much